This is Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network, brought to you by the Iowa Soybean Association. Your daily recap of the information that affects Iowa's farmers, producers, and consumers, right here in the heart of the heartland. With reports from our award-winning broadcast team of Dustin Hoffman, Riley Smith, and Mark Magnuson. Now, from the IARN studios in Des Moines, Here's Mark Magnuson. Hello and welcome into Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Mark Magnuson. From the Iowa State Fairgrounds in Des Moines, today's episode will feature Brian Britt. He is the owner of Finnegan, the Big Boar Contest winner at the 2024 State Fair. Today is Tuesday, August 13th, 2024, and we're so glad you can join us for today's show. We will have that interview coming up with Brian in just a little bit, but first let's run down the closing market information. It's time now for the Ag Matters PM Closing Market Summary, your source for market analysis and settlement prices from the day's trade in Chicago, courtesy of the folks at agmarket.net. At the end of another trading day here on Tuesday, we are joined by Ross Baldwin of agmarket.net. Ross, what did we see take place in the grains here today? It's all a lower day of trade across the grain market. Soybeans, they really got hit hard here following the ugly numbers that they had coming out of yesterday's WASDE report. But corn was four to five cents lower. Soybeans were 20 to 25 cents lower. And over in the wheat market, Chicago wheat was eight cents lower. And Ross, yesterday we actually saw a little bit of a bullish reaction right away for the corn because of that change with the acreage numbers. Was that kind of just a one off there for yesterday? Is that something that could give corn a little bit of a boost here in the next few days? I, I don't know that we'll see the corn market work too much higher above the $4 December level, but it certainly added a, a different level layer of support that corn did not have prior to the report. And, and like you said, you saw corn close higher yesterday as soybeans were lower. Soybeans were, were down hard here today and, and corn still holding in there. I mean, corn did bounce off the lows, but bigger picture, I think the problem you got for the corn market is we are we're heading into the peak supply of the year for the U.S. There's no question it's a, it's a big crop that we got coming at us. It's a, a record yield that the USDA is pegging today at a 183.1. And I still would not rule out that we could eventually see that yield maybe work up to 184, 185. I mean, you go back to big crops get bigger, small crops get smaller, and we just continue to have ideal weather. I mean, when you when you look at the the cool temps and, and there's moisture moving across the Corn Belt right now, there's moisture moving into Illinois over the rest of the week, the, the fill for this, this corn crop and, and, and the fill of the ear, I mean, you couldn't write it up any better. So I think the corn market, it's gonna struggle to move higher but I don't know that we're going to see just the complete washout that you, you probably could have seen had we had like a two, 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 three, two, four type number that was floating around out here. The bean market, that's the one that's, that's got a, a tough road ahead of it. That, that bean number was ugly. You, you had the bean carry out come in as a, at a five, 560 million bushels which the trade was looking at 470 was the guesses. So 90 million bushels more beans for the ending stocks. And that jumped the stocks to use ratio from a 10% in the July WASDE to a 12.7% in the August WASDE, which is a massive increase for the bean market. So I, I think the biggest, the biggest struggle the corn market's going to have is the bean market. Because I, I think you got beans today, November beans, we, we held around 961, 962. The low was just above 960. I would not rule out that we could see beans move to the low $9 level. If not, go to $9 for November futures. And that was kind of going to be my next question, Ross, is with that news that we got about soybeans yesterday, we've had a lot of people stop by the booth. We're here at the Iowa State Fair, and they've had kind of some downtrodden faces, you know, looking at those numbers for the soybeans. So other than maybe China coming in and making those soybean purchases, is there anything we have to look forward to to potentially move soybeans in the right direction? This isn't something to look forward to, but low prices will hopefully encourage better bean demand. We did see the USDA increase bean exports. They did increase corn exports yesterday. So I, I do think beans will find better demand down here at these levels or if we continue to sell off more. But you, you look out ahead of what is there to look at. 
the, the world bean carryout jumped yesterday to a little over 134 million metric tons. The trade guess was 128. So, I mean, we had a huge increase in the world number. And to look at what that could do is maybe that drives fewer acres down in South America. So that is something that we will have to pay attention to because you got, you got planning that's not far off down in South America for their bean crop. And the market will seek to discourage more bean acres. And so that is a place where prices could go lower that they put more pain on the South American producer. So that'll be something to look, watch and look forward to. On the other side of the ag marketplace, what was the story today with the cattle and hogs? We saw a stronger day of trade across the cattle markets. Live cattle were anywhere from 80 cents to a dollar 80 higher. The the deferred months led the way, which we've we've seen recently. The market it, it's been bull spread, and then they've they've taken the premiums out of the deferreds on the sell off. So it was a good sign to actually see these deferred contracts put premium back in it. And the feeder cattle was two to two and a half dollars higher. We had that big day, big up day on Friday, which had a lot of people thinking maybe cattle put a, a short-term low in here, given the size of the sell-off recently. And yesterday's sell-off did not confirm that. Now today, it was a good sign to see. A lot of the live cattle contracts, I mean, they did close back above some major support and resistance levels. They closed above uh, Monday's highs. The feeder cattle market, the, the nearby September, most actively traded September contract, it did not close above yesterday's high, but it still had a, a, a very strong performance. The equity markets, those have been firmer here today. And I think just given the, the size of the sell-off that we've had over the cattle markets and the equity markets, you're going to continue to see a, a very strong correlation, I think, to cattle watching, seeing what these equity markets are doing. Just given that there's been some psychological damage done across these equity markets, and cattle are watching that. They're, you know, historically, they have a strong correlation to those markets, and I think we're going to see that really ramp up as we move forward and, and and see what those equity markets do. Cash trade last week that was negative. That was a solid three dollars higher. I would look for cash to, to be steady this week. The Packers have really ratcheted up on how many cattle they're slaughtering. And they, they got some decent numbers around them last week. So I don't know that they're going to have to be terribly aggressive th this week. So I, I think cash, I mean, I'm hoping for steady. What's the best way for our viewers, our listeners in the state of Iowa to get in touch for more marketing information? You can reach me at our office here in Anthem. Our number is 712-373-3276, or you can visit agmarket.net to find any of the ag market brokers. He is Ross Baldwin with agmarket.net, our guest here today. Ross, thanks so much for the time. Appreciate it, and have a great rest of your week. Thanks for having me. You guys, too. Thank you to Ross Baldwin of agmarket.net for our closing market summary. Let's take a look now at the closing numbers. You can find the numbers anytime on our website under the Markets tab at iowaagnet.com. September corn closes down five and a half at 377 and three quarters. September soybeans down 24 even at 947 and a quarter. September soybean meal down 620 at 299.80. September soybean oil down $1.19 at 4029. Chicago wheat down eight even at 528 and three quarters. Minneapolis wheat up three quarters of a cent at 593 even. Kansas City hard red wheat down a half cent at 547 and three quarters. September oats up two and a quarter at 322 and a half. On the Merck, August live cattle up 67 cents at 184 even. August feeder cattle up two dollars and seven cents at 246.47. October lean hogs down a dollar 47 at 72.85. October pork cutout down 72 cents at 90.92. And class three milk up two pennies at 2058. That does it for our market coverage for today. It is time now to hear from our sponsor, the Iowa Soybean Association and the Soybean Checkoff. And when we come back, I will be joined by Brian Britt, the owner of the Big Boar Contest winner at the 2024 State Fair. That winner is named Finnegan. And Brian Britt will join us coming up on the show. This is Ag Matters PM. Iowa Soybean Association is driven to deliver for Iowa's 40,000 soybean farmers. We're proud to provide objective agronomic research, a helping hand with soil and water stewardship, and timely industry news powered by the Soybean Checkoff. Learn more at IASoybeans.com. In today's show, I'm joined by Brian Britt of Monticello. He is the owner of the Big Boar. Finnegan, who won the Big Boar Contest here at the State Fair this year, is going to tell us about what it takes to get an animal to win a contest where they're trying to be as big as possible. Here's Brian Britt, owner of Finnegan. 
Mark Magnuson for the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm here with Brian Britt. He has the winning pig, the big boar, and his name is Finnegan. And Brian, when you came in here today, did you feel like you had a potential champion and a potential record setter? Yeah, I did. Yeah, we won in 19 and then in 21. In 21, our pig was 34 pounds short of the record, or 44. And I really wanted the record. And I thought this guy was, I didn't think he was as big as what he is but I thought I could beat the record. And Brian, he kind of has a unique structure to him too. He's just such a tall pig. That back stands up out of the pen and you can just see it over the top of the pen. Has he always been that way, kind of a unique pig? I pick pigs for this show. You gotta pick pigs that have frame. They have to have a frame. And so they've got the height, they got to have the length, the width. And a lot of our pigs are that way. It's, um, you just gotta have that and you gotta build that skeletal muscle from the birth from the beginning so um, yeah he's you got to have the height you got to have it and brian where are you located at here in iowa monticello and coming into this contest we always know that it's sometimes difficult to move the pig around the show ring finnegan a little hesitant at start had to give him some help but he did eventually make his way into the scale and there was a palpable buzz in the crowd could you feel it yeah 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 I, my main concern was to get him on, but you could hear the crowd going, you know, is he gonna? And then um, he did not want to go forward. You could tell he wanted to back up, so I turned him around, and he backed on because he couldn't see what he was going. And then the crowd went. <laughs> and Brian, what was that official weight we got here today for the new champion and new record setter? Um, I think it's around 1,420. It's 1,420 or something, 1,420 plus. I threw a few um, wood shavings on the scale so they probably deducted a couple pounds for that. We know that, like you said, it takes genetics. It takes that frame that you need to get a pig to be this size. And we also know that, of course, they take in a lot of calories. So what are we looking at for his diet and what he likes to eat? <laughs> um, he eats a mainly a corn soy diet. This guy is the most finicky pig I've ever met. He is, if you change his diet at all, he won't eat it. He just turns his nose up and walks away. If the feed is over eight hours old, he won't eat it. Six hours old, basically, he won't eat it. He just turns it up, nose up, and goes. Um, we actually had a ton of feed made special. Um, it was a little higher on fat and stuff. He wouldn't eat it. So I, you have to have wet feed. He loves wet feed. Um, it's corn soy diet. There's a couple ingredients in there that are natural. He likes it sweet, I'll say that. Uh, no milk, no bakery, but he does like sweet feed, so. We, get it, we make it sweet. Kind of sounds like he knew he was special, maybe deserved a little of that special treatment. And then as we wrap up here, you mentioned that you've been in this contest before. You had your eyes on potentially setting the record. How long have you been in the hog business here? And I guess, what do you look forward to the most about a contest like this and being involved in the state fair? How long have I been in pig business? Yes. Uh, basically my life, um, but we have our own farm since 1990. I've had a passion for pigs since I was a little boy. Um, that's just been my passion. Well, Brian. Sorry, go ahead. And so, you know, I thought my, a long time ago when I was on the pork board, we came down a grill and I, I walked by the big boar contest. I thought, you know, that's kind of looks unique. I might do that. And so now we're, we're winning. And after just a couple of entrants last year, it was fun this year, too, to see seven pigs out here competing. That's really nice. And that's kind of why I didn't bring any more back, because I was afraid they were too big. And people wouldn't bring boars because they thought they couldn't win. So I didn't bring any pigs. Well, Brian, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Once again, congratulations. It was fun to see you here today. And congratulations to Finnegan, too. Thanks. Thank you once again to Brian Britt of Monticello for joining today's show. Also, congratulations to Finnegan, the big boar. And that's going to do it for today's episode of Ag Matters PM. You can find all of our content on our website at iowaagnet.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the notification icon as well. That will let you know whenever we have any new videos available for you. You can follow us on social media at X, LinkedIn, TikTok, and Facebook. And don't forget as well our three daily podcast morning, midday, and closing market podcast, which can be found anytime on our website under the podcast tab at iowaagnet.com. Also, don't forget to check out our daily Iowa Ag Matters podcast. From the Iowa State Fairgrounds in Des Moines, I'm Mark Magnuson. For Quentin Slater, Riley Smith, Dustin Huffman, and Andy Peterson, we thank you for watching.
This has been Ag Matters PM.